us today, we have Maggie Lavender. She is a board certified family nurse practitioner licensed in Texas with a specialization in sleep disorders, medicine, and neurology. She attended Louisiana State University Health Sciences Center, where she received her Bachelor of Science in Nursing. She began her career working in a pediatric intensive care and burn unit. She later moved to Houston, Texas, and continued her career in a neuroscience intensive care unit at a level one trauma center. She then completed her Master of Science in Nursing and Postmaster's Emergency Nurse Practitioner Certification simultaneously at the University of Texas Health Science Center. Her nurse practitioner career began in Houston, Texas at a Comprehensive Sleep Medicine Associates alongside Dr. Gerald Simmons beginning in 2012. She briefly moved to Pittsburgh and provided care at an internal medicine practice before moving back to the Woodlands, Texas. She is currently practicing again at CSMA and is specialized in comprehensive sleep disorders, neurology, and, and epilepsy. Maggie has evolved to be a recognized nurse practitioner specialist on a national level and currently functions as a consultant and lecturer on the management of narcolepsy patients. So let's please welcome Maggie to us. All right, thanks for having me today. I'm excited to be here to present on behalf of Avidel and give y'all some information regarding LumRise. All right, so today we're gonna present on LumRise. This is the once at bedtime for your daytime functioning. Um, LumRise is the um, first and only extended release oral suspension single dose sodium oxybate um, for the treatment of cataplexy or um, excessive daytime sleepiness in adults with narcolepsy. Here's me. Um, uh, <laughs> for my disclosures, um, I'm a consultant speaker and advisory board member for Avidel Pharmaceuticals, Jazz Pharmaceuticals, and Harmony Biosciences. Of course, when we're discussing any um, pharmaceutical information, we always have to go into the safety information. So LumRise, as we know, is a central nervous system um, depressant, so it should not be combined with any other medicines that help you fall asleep, including sleep aids, opioid analgesics, benzos, antidepressants, antipsychotics, anti-epilepsy drugs, anything that is sedating. Um, these can cause respiratory depression, hypotension type issues. Um, the active ingredient of LumRise is sodium oxybate. This is the form of GABA hydroxybutyrate, GHB, um, which is um, clearly a controlled substance. Um, again, abuse or misuse of this illegal GHB alone or with other CNS depressants can have serious side effects, um, changes in alertness or consciousness. Um, they can cause trouble breathing, again, respiratory depression, drowsiness, coma, or death. If you experience any of this, please reach out to a medical provider immediately. Um, because of these risk factors, LumRise is only available through prescription only, and it must be um, filled through certified pharmacies um, that are included in the REMS program. Both the prescriber and the patient must be enrolled in LumRise REMS in order to be able to receive LumRise. For further information, you can go to LumRiseRIMS.com or call that number. Again, LumRise is indicated um, for the treatment of um, excessive daytime sleepiness or cataplexy in adults with narcolepsy. This is the one and only extended release oral suspension um, once nightly used for narcolepsy. Um, again, it can cause, um, it talks about cataplexy, which we know is a set onset of weakness or um, paralyzed muscles and excessive daytime sleepiness. All right, so... For the formal introduction of LumRise, LumRise was approved May 1st of 2023, so we just reached our one-year anniversary, yay, um, for the treatment of cataplexy and, again, excessive daytime sleepiness in adults with narcolepsy. The once at bedtime dosing is what makes this medicine truly unique. Um, it has a potential for less interrupted sleep. You're just taking it at bedtime and you don't have to wake up for that two and a half to four hour window to take that second dose. Um, it comes in pre-measured packets of four and a half grams, six, seven and a half grams, or nine grams at bedtime. It's proven effective in its clinical trial, and we'll go through that a little bit. The efficacy was evaluated in a phase three randomized placebo-controlled trial. And again, as I said before, it is pre-measured packets that you're going to mix in a um, provided um, container um, and shake vigorously. And we'll go through that. Once at bedtime, LumRise is designed very differently from the twice nightly sodium oxbates that we are accustomed to. Um, LumRise, again, as we have uh, talked about, it is a suspension. Um, it contains a blend of sodium oxbate granules that work in two different ways. 
there is an immediate release granule and a controlled release granule. The immediate release granules start working as soon as you fall asleep. You take the medicine, it starts working pretty immediately. The controlled release starts working later as it travels down the GI gut, okay? So the immediate release is, is um, starting to work in the acidic environment of the gut, and the controlled release starts to work in the alkaline environment further down the gut. So that necessitates the need for you to have to wake up for that second dose, okay? Sodium oxidate is strongly recommended by the Academy of Sleep Medicine to treat narcolepsy, and this is based on the evidence that it reduces cataplexy and excessive daytime sleepiness. The... Again, the base ingredient in Lumrise is um, gamma um, is the sodium salt of gamma hydroxybutyrate. It's sodium oxalate. It's the same medicine as the twice nightly. It's just this formulation is what makes Lumrise different from the twice nightly. Okay, so let's break it down um, at what a single dose of um, twice of um, sodium oxalate means compared to the twice nightly. So in the first graph, you're going to see the immediate release sodium oxalate. That's our twice nightly. So this talks about how it is um, the, the contribution of, I mean, sorry, the concentration of the medicine in the body. So you're going to take that first dose at 10 p.m. You're going to have an immediate high concentration when you take that first dose. And then you can see the quick decline over the course of the four hours. So there's very little medicine in your system. Not zero, but very little. You have to wake up for that second dose, and you take that second dose of that um, twice nightly sodium oxalate. You have a higher peak concentration, and then again, you have a rapid decline within that four-hour window. When you cross over to the green graph and you look at the single-dose loom rise, you take that medication at bedtime sitting in your bed. You can see you have a slightly stronger concentration pretty early on in the night than you do with the twice nightly. And then you have a more gradual decline, which mimics more of our natural sleep pattern. Why is this good? Well, there's a few ways of why this is a good thing for patients. Not having to wake up in that middle of the night is easier on the patient. They don't have to worry or the stress of setting the alarm. They don't have to stress of, oh my God, I woke up one hour later or one hour earlier. How is this going to affect my next day? It eliminates that stress level in the middle of the night, which is an adrenaline surge. So then they have difficulty going back to sleep. Then it poses the question, do I give them a sedative to help them go back to sleep? Now they've wasted two, three, maybe four hours in the middle of the night. How is that going to affect their daytime functioning the following day? That's the biggest issue. When you look at the twice nightly, as a clinician, our concern is this high, high, high concentration in the middle of the night. Okay, this is where we're in our deeper phases of sleep, and we have to be really concerned about our patient's breathing patterns, all right? So we have to, at first, have cleared that they didn't have sleep apnea or any other breathing issues. But when we're in our deep phases of sleep at that time, we really have to look at these patients and make sure this didn't cause any further breathing issues, okay? Um, and if you have a good clinician, they've ruled those things out, but a lot are not doing that. So we have to be concerned of how this is affecting a person's breathing. Remember, this is a CNS depressant medication. All right, so the first and only single dose sodium oxalate was evaluated um, for treatment of narcolepsy symptoms of EDS and cataplexy in its clinical trial. The rest on was the trial. It was a 13 week phase three multi center randomized double blind placebo controlled two arm trial, a lot of words, um, evaluating the efficacy and safety in adults with narcolepsy. Again, this we're focusing on adults here. This breaks down what made up the patient characteristics in the study. Mean age was about 31. Um, slightly slated a little heavy on the female side. Um, broke down of the different races, again, slightly heavier on the Caucasian. Um, mean um, BMI was about the same, 28 kilos. Narcolepsy, again, it was heavily weighted on NARC1 because we were wanting to look at the effects of cataplexy, okay? But we did have a good representation of narcolepsy type 2. And then again, you um, have some patients representative of the hypertension phase. Um, what this study did is we looked at co-primary endpoints to see how was this medicine um, effective. We looked at what was the patient's ability to stay awake through testing. Um, what was the clinical global, global impression improvement scale? This is how the providers... Um, looking at patients that were starting on the medicine, were they improving once they were on the medicine? And then again, we looked at cataplexy attack um, numbers in our narcolepsy 1 patients. Um, and then it's important to note that of this patient demographic, 63% of the participants were on other um, medications, wakeful agents during this trial. So participants taking once um, at um, bedtime loom rise, they were able to stay awake 
um, 1.5 times longer versus the placebo. So how this is broken down is we um, took patients and we performed a um, we meaningful wakefulness test. This is when the patients are set up in scenarios opposite of the um, MSLT, and they're asked to stay awake in these very quiet um, environments. And at baseline, the average, I mean, the baseline mean minutes of the patient being able to stay awake was all, about five minutes for both the loom rise um, load and the placebo load. Um, at week three, we had our first um, assessment. At week three, they were taking six grams. Um, the loom rise patients had an increase of eight minutes that they were able to stay awake. At week eight, at seven and a half grams, 9.6 minutes addition, they were able to stay awake. And at week 13, on the nine grams, they had an additional just shy of 11 minutes that they were able to stay awake. Okay, so this is very, very good data that is showing it has made a significant impact on the patient's ability to stay awake. So it's improving their excessive daytime sleepiness early on three weeks at very low doses. So if you think about having narcolepsy and how EDS affects your daily life, 11 extra minutes and the ability to stay awake during the day, that's pretty impactful. Okay, the next um, endpoint that we looked at was the Clinical Global Impression Improvement Scale. Again, this is where the clinicians were asked questions to rate how is the patient improving on the medication. We looked at were they much or very much improved, okay? So when you look at week three, 40% of the clinician rating patients as much or very much improved. Week eight, 64% of their patients were much or very much improved. And by week 13, 73% of the patient um, per the clinicians were deemed to be much or very much improved. 73% of patients um, were very much improved taking this medication. The um, other primary um, endpoint that we were looking at is cataplexy. Um, so again, we looked at um, placebo and Lumoris patients, and we asked them, how many cataplexy events are you having per week at baseline? Average of about 19. That's a lot, okay? We have seen patients with more, but can you imagine 19 events per week on these patients? So at week three, they had a reduction of seven, and just shy of seven and a half cataplexy events per week. At week eight, 10, um, reduction of 10. And at week 13, a reduction of 11 and a half cataplexy events per week. Guys, that's huge in some of our patients. And you have to think that some cataplexy events are not just, mm, have a little bit hand weakness. Some of these cataplexy events are huge, life-changing. These patients are avoiding living their life. So if we can take away 11 and a half cataplexy events per week, maybe they can get some aspects of their social life back, stop missing out on their kids' things, laugh for the first time in their life, and enjoy life. So that's pretty impressive. Um, so... To kind of sum it up right here, cataplex weekly cataplexy events decreased by 57% by week 13. That's 57% of the life of the patient's life back. That's that's a lot. Okay, so when you're a patient with loom rise, um, how so oops, sorry, my backtrack. Once a bedtime loom rise is proven to improve daytime symptoms of cataplexy and EDS. When you are prescribed loom rise, it's not just here's your medicine, walk out the door, and you're on your own. You get all the little gift boxes with it, right? So um, well, how does it help you? You get reduced excessive daytime sleepiness, present number one. Improved symptoms, 73% were rated by clinicians as much or very much improved. That's your Merry Christmas right there. Reduced cataplexy events, 57% again had fewer weekly cataplexy events. That's like, I don't know, Merry Christmas for the next 10 years, I'm not sure. And then you had significant improvements as soon as three weeks into the trial. Again, that's very low dose medication. So what to expect while you're taking Lumrise? This is the big question every medicine has to ask. What are our side effects? These side effects are no different than the twice nightly out there. But the typical are nausea, dizziness, bedwetting, headache, and vomiting. The most common side effect leading to discontinuation was dizziness. Now let's break this down and really talk about it. These symptoms kind of seem pretty bad. I don't want to take this medicine. I don't like these side effects. It's important to note that when you break down the side effects according to dosing and how the patients are taking the medicine, if you take the medicine following the rule of 
You know, you have to wait the two hour window of food before you take the medicine. You have to work on your hydration really well during the day, at least bare minimum half of your body weight in ounces per water. If you follow the basics, go to the bathroom before you take the medicine, empty your bladder right before you get in the bed, these things are minimized, okay? There's also information out there of how you can take the medicine with maybe a different flavoring than just pure water to help combat the nausea. These, these side effects are minimized. But the side effects that do happen are at the start of a new dose, okay, at the start of taking the medicine in general, at the dose change, the start of the new dose. So as you continue to let your body acclimate and get higher in dosing, believe it or not, the side effects pretty much disappear. We saw the same pattern with twice nightly. So it's very important as the patient that you know don't give up the first week when the side effects hit you. But it's important as clinicians that we have to remind our patients of this. And hey, we're in the long haul with you. Um, so if you experience anything out of your normal, let your clinician know. Don't just stop the medicine because you're afraid of it. Don't just give up on it and not talk to your clinician about it. It's important, okay? In the clinical trial, the side effects typically occurred, like I said, when they started a new dose and declined over time while staying on the same dose and actually once they got to higher doses later. There were no clinically meaningful changes in blood pressure or heart rate. This is important. There's a lot of information out there about how, do we do high salt, do we do low salt, and what's, what's the, the strategy on that? Well, I'm going to tell you, salt is important. You know, it's preached on every aspect of our life, right? But as your clinician, we should be able to screen you and say, are you a salt-sensitive patient? That's the most important. If you're a salt-sensitive patient, we need to have further discussion. Maybe this isn't the drug choice for you. But, guys, we go eat french fries. We don't talk about salt for french fries, right? So there are lifestyle changes that we can do to adapt to this and compensate for this. So it's important to note that, yes, salt is important. But per our clinical, there was no meaningful changes in the blood pressure and heart rate, okay? So if this is something that's truly important to you and something that's really into your, your dietary finding, have the discussion. Open that up with your doctor. Um, and here we state that Lumerase may not be appropriate for some people with narcolepsy, and that's okay. Talk to your doctor and let them know, and you'll have that discussion and see if it's right for you. Just like all medicines out there, it's not one size fits all. Okay. So how can we make loom rise part of your nighttime routine? Super easy. We did all the hard work for you, all right? So it comes in pre-measured packets. There's no drawing up your doses. There's no trying to figure out how do we miscalculate, whatever. It's take the little foil package, shake it, you're done. That's pretty much all you got to do, okay? So we give you a measuring cup so you don't even have to worry about figuring out measurement. The measurement has markings, A and B, okay? So it's important that you get prepared before you go to bed, you Get your little water bottle, get your cup, get your medicine, potty, shut down the house. Everything should be done, and then you're going to go sit in your bed. You are not leaving your bed again. You're sitting in your bed. You're going to take your water bottle, pour your water into line A, take your packet, empty the entire packet into the container. No half packet, no three-fourths of a packet because I only have certain many hours of sleep. The whole packet, okay? Close up the container, shake vigorously for 60 seconds, one full minute. Okay, it is going to look just like that picture, white, milky, sandy, granular in consistency. You didn't do anything wrong. It's not going to be clear and it's not going to be fully dissolved. Okay, drink it. Then you're going to take your water bottle and fill to line B. Wiggle it around. Get all the little loose granules off the container. Drink it. Put the cup down and lay down. That's it. Okay, do not get out of your bed, <laughs> okay? This medicine is going to get you to go to sleep at about 5 to 15 minutes on average, okay? So I do not want you walking around. Don't make that extra phone call because who knows what you're going to be telling the person on the line. So one full minute, follow the instructions. Um, again, these are not the full instructions. This is the basis, but there's more instructions online, okay? All right, so again, like I said, when you get on LoomRise, do you not only get the wonderful Christmas presents of feeling better, but you get a whole team behind you to help you. So you're not going at this alone. Not only do you have your clinician, who you should have a good rapport with and a good relationship with, you have the whole Rise Up support, okay? Rise Up support services, how do we help you? Well, we provide personalized support to help you access, start, and stay on track with your Loom Rise treatment plan. Stay on track is a very important thing here, okay? Patients will first I can't afford it. I don't want to do it, all right? Then they, oh, I'm all gung-ho. I just left the doctor's office. Let's do it. That first month, you get your medicine. The doctor said, I need to take it. Let's go. 
any side effect, any, any glitch that comes, the patients are ready to quit because they don't have the team behind them supporting them. Okay, well, now you do. Um, your personal, personal Rise Up Nurse Care Navigator um, is dedicated to helping you start the Loom Rise and will be with you throughout your journey of treatment. Not the first month, not the first six months, not the first five years. They're with you throughout, okay? Your nurse care navigator will help you understand what your insurance coverage is and help connect you with any financial assistance that you might qualify for. So don't be scared of the financial burden, okay? We're out here to help you get this medicine and we will find a way because we truly feel this medicine can help you. And then when you're ready to start taking Lumrise, your nurse care navigator will call, to review, call you to review how to take the medication and answer any questions you may have. And that phone call doesn't stop. They keep calling and checking in, okay? And you have access to them if you have any further questions in addition to your clinician. So it's your best friend. Did I go the right way? Yes. Okay, so again, um, what is Lumrise indicated for? It is the extended release oral suspension in prescription medicine used to treat um, the following symptoms of narcolepsy. Sudden onset of um, weak or paralyzed muscles, cataplexy, or excessive daytime sleepiness. You don't have to have both. This is why it works for NARC too as well. You can have or. Um, and again, it is only in adults over the age of 18. Um, important safety information, again, it is a central nervous system depressant, so we have to be very careful with use of other sleep aids or any other um, sedative, sedative medicines and just be careful. Of course, we have to run the risk of um, possible hypotension, uh, changes in alertness or drowsiness, fainting, syncope, death, um, respiratory depression in combination with any of these meds. Again, the active ingredient is a form of GHB, which is a controlled substance. Abuse of misuse of this illegal GHB alone or with other CNS depressants can cause negative effects. Please call your doctor right away. Because of these risks, again, you have to be um, a part of the um, Loomrise Rooms program, you and the provider. Um, and if you need further information, go to loomriserooms.com. We do not know the efficacy and safety of patients less than 18 years old. We're researching that. Okay, we don't have it approved yet, but hopefully we'll have some information soon for you. Again, do not take Lumrise if you take other sleep medicines or sedatives. Drink alcohol. We cannot have alcohol when we're on this medicine, okay? So if that is something that you like to do, as I tell my patients, please talk to your provider. But you and I are going to have that conversation. What's your priority in your life, having that drink or having your life back? Um, that's not my decision for you, but we have that conversation. Um, or if you have any rare problems called succinic semi-aldehyde dehydrogenase deficiency, please talk with your doctor. Again, you need to keep this in a safe place to prevent abuse or misuse. This should not be left out on your counter to have everyone access it, the little two-year-old kid. This is not a fun little game or, ooh, magic sprinkles we put in our drink. It needs to be locked up so no one has access to you, um, to the medicine. Um, and you cannot sell or give this medicine away because it is against the law. Um, and then you need to have the discussion with your provider if you've ever been abused or dependent on alcohol, prescription medicines, or other street drugs. Safety information continued. Um, you um, have to give yourself a good six to eight hours on this medicine before you can fully function in the morning. I'm not saying you can't get up and like fix yourself cereal um, early in the morning, but you cannot go operate heavy machinery, drive cars, or lift heavy objects, go swimming or anything like that. Um, you, and of course, don't please don't fly an airplane. Um, you can need at least six hours after you've taken that dose. I tell my patients, this is probably not the medicine you're going to want to start to take in the middle of the week when you have a big work meeting the next morning. Let's start it on a weekend or start it on a holiday when you have a few days to see how your body adjusts. Falling asleep quickly, um, including standing or while getting up from bed, has led to falls and injuries. Um, so it has relied um, in some patients being hospitalized. So that's why I stress you take it, you sit, you lay down. We don't go do anything else. Um, it can have serious side effects because of its respiratory depression issues, including breathing problems. Um, that's trouble breathing, slowing breathing, periods of sh um, shortness of breath, anything like that. Um, this should be ruled out by your provider. If they're not bringing it up, you bring it up. Um, sleep apnea needs to be fully treated before. People who already have breathing or lung problems are higher chances of having breathing problems. Um, breathing problems when they take loom rise. So please have that discussion. Mental health problems, including confusion, seeing or hearing things that are not real, um, abnormal thinking, anxiety, feeling upset, depression, um, trying to kill yourself. Please talk to your doctor if any of these come up. But this discussion should be had with your doctor prior to starting and it should be continually managed. Um, sleepwalking. Sleepwalking can cause injuries. Again, call your doctor if you start sleepwalking. 
but this is also important. Go to the bathroom before you take the medicine. Sit in the bed. Don't get out of the bed. Um, whatever you do, don't get out of the bed if you wake up um, because you, you're on medicine, so you can start um, doing things in your sleep. It's not super common, but it does happen. Um, again, tell your doctor if you're on a salt-restricted diet, have high blood pressure, heart failure, or kidney problems, we need to have the sodium talk with you and just decide if this is the right medicine for you. Again, the most common side effects, nausea, dizziness, bedwetting, headache, and vomiting. Um, they, your side effects may increase when you take higher doses, only when you first start that higher dose, and then it levels off after that. Um, Lumars can cause physical dependence and craving for the medicine when it is not taken as directed. So it's one packet, not two, not three, not any extras. Um, for more information, um, talk to your doctor or pharmacy, and then um, you are encouraged to report any side effects you're having, as little or dumb that it may seem, please report it so we can keep track of this, okay? All right, so your step now is if you're interested, and this sounds like a gut medicine for you, it's your job to ask your doctor if it can be right for you. Not all doctors are starting the conversation, so this is you. Be your own advocate. Bring it up. Um, experience that once at night and daytime difference, okay? It can make a, a true big change for you. Again, Lumines is the first and only FDA-approved sodium oxalate treatment designed to help improve symptoms of cataplexy and EDS and with a once at bedtime dose. It comes in pre-measured packets. This is great for easy dosing. You don't have to be scared about dosing. And discreet travel. We're not traveling around with liquid bottles that we have to get checked everywhere, okay? Once at bedtime, so no middle of the night awakening, which is great for you, but great for bed partners and other family members in the house because normally they're waking up for the alarm, not you. Um, and then, of course, you have personalized support through our Rise Up every step of the way, and they will continue with you for your whole course of treatment. That's it. Any questions? Questions? Yes. Mm -hmm. Correct. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Same concept. So can I, I ask you repeat the question? Real yes, quick? Sorry. And that was, that was a, her son is a teenager. Um, and of course, he's not able to get this medicine until he turns 18. But her question was when he goes off to college and he starts living on his own and he's not under mom's care anymore. Um, with our sodium oxidate patients, we have that discussion with them that you need support if there's a fire alarm or an emergency because clearly you're not going to be able to function in the middle of the night. You still have to have that warning, okay? For my patients that have been on twice nightly and are on loom rise, they can't function in the middle of the night, but they can function enough to hear that alarm and know it's bad, okay? But they're not going to be responsible for getting that baby out of the house or getting everybody to a safe spot, but they know they got to do something. Correct. I'm not going to say 100%, but they should be able to, yeah. So you have, but have that discussion. So if he doesn't have a roommate, he needs to have a neighbor who's looking out for him. He needs to have someone who he can trust that needs to know he's on this medicine that is a, a, a mom for him. Okay. Any other questions? Yeah. Keep going. Uh huh. Oh, thank you. Are you hey. talking about comparison the, the once and twice? Yeah. So okay. these type of things with the Zy wave, do they, is Lumeriz, Lumeriz a similar Maybe I went too fast. I'm frozen. I can't get to the graphs. <laughs> okay, but even frozen. just this one. Um, okay. Oh, not this one. But yeah, the ones where they felt, you know, better in three weeks or 13 oh, weeks, okay. uh, those graphs. Yes. Do you know if that's similar, like comparison wise to Zy wave? And Zyrem, or would you not? Avidel team, do you want to take that one? I mean, I can talk from clinical experience, but I don't, I don't know the research to tell you the honest answer. But clinically, I've seen the good comparison, okay, that they are feeling better. The biggest difference that I see with this medicine is my patients who struggle with, A, waking up in the middle of the night, B, my major anxiety patients, and C, the patients who have difficulty going back to sleep, okay? So the... In my clinical experience, I've seen better results on loom rise clearly in those patients because a chunk of 30 minutes on a narcolepsy patient that they didn't sleep and a chunk of four hours that they didn't sleep, that makes a big difference, okay, of how their performance is during the day. So having that question, and I know when we have the discussion of the twice nightlies, and I still prescribe twice nightlies for my patient. Again, you have to pick what's best for the patient. But having that discussion, 
you know, the big bug eyes. What? You wanted me to wake up in the middle of the night? Like, I'm telling you, I'm having trouble being exhausted and now you want me to wake up. Automatic fear from the very beginning. We help them through that, okay? So there's an anxiety already going in. This one, there's not, okay? The discussion I have with my patients, too, is I don't want them looking at the clock. Okay, you have to look at the clock look twice nightly with Lumrise, you don't. So when my twice nightly patients, they need that eight hours, sometimes that nine hours of sleep, and they're obsessed with, I got this menu in the first drink, and I got this menu in the second drink, and I only got this this night compared to this the other night. With Lumrise, I'm getting the call, I'm only sleeping six hours, I'm only sleeping seven, but I feel great. Don't look at the clock. Okay, the problem is you're not having that middle of the night awakening that you're needing to get yourself back into sleep. That's where that extra hour is coming from. Okay, so wake up, make sure you didn't miss your alarm for to get to work the next day, but don't be so gung ho that you lost an hour of sleep. You technically didn't, you actually got it. You didn't have an hour wasted. Okay, does that help you? Yeah.